Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton. And have you been doing a lot of shopping online? Because I'm embarrassed to say I spend way too much money on the things I'll probably never use. And I almost ended up buying this right here, PlayStation Classic. It's actually on sale right now. It's only 60 bucks. And I was so ready to bring back my childhood memories and to play those PlayStation Classic hits on this little device. But then I thought, well, first of all, I don't think I need it. Second of all, I think I can make my own way cheaper using a lot of these microcomputer boards that I have lying around. And third of all, how can I turn this into a space video? And then it dawned on me, of course. Well, did you actually know that the New Horizons mission that I have selected right here in Universe Sandbox Square is essentially flying past the object known as Ultima Thule, Practically right now, um, I actually made this video a little bit before it happened, but on January 1st of 2019, this is literally the first space event uh, coming from NASA. And interestingly, uh, one thing about this particular spacecraft that most people don't actually know is that um, inside of it is a CPU that is a PlayStation 1 CPU. As a matter of fact, um, there was an article I read recently where some people were actually not happy that with how we didn't actually include any kind of a message or any kind of a symbolic um, gesture like what it was so many other craft where we usually put something in a spacecraft to commemorate the launch or to in some sense uh well i guess if some alien civilization discovers it to have them understand who sent this but people were unhappy that uh new horizons doesn't have this but it does a playstation one cpu it literally is like a message to the alien saying well earth is a gamer's planet and if you do come to our planet expect a lot of toxic players and i guess and a lot of other interesting facts that come with being a gamer being a gamer myself i'm actually quite happy with the fact that playstation is powering this thing and we're going to actually talk a little bit more about this mission after we get some of the first data from ultima Thule. but for now um that's essentially the first exciting space event of 2019 and it happens literally on january 1st in this video, I actually wanted to cover some more events that are going to be happening in the next few months. And for the most part, these are just preliminary. We don't really have exact dates for most of them. But 2019 promises to be a super exciting year for SpaceX. They already have a tremendous amount of missions planned. Uh, they're going to be the number one space company launching craft uh, in 2019. Uh, the Roscosmos that's usually responsible for or was responsible for most of the launches is way behind. And a lot of really, really exciting missions will be actually coming from SpaceX. In January alone, SpaceX is going to be launching an Iridium uh, communication network satellite, actually 10 of them, and um, a very interesting mission uh, by Space IL, or I guess Space IL, uh, which is a, an Israeli startup um, that started back when Google um, announced the so-called Lunar Prize. Basically, anyone who can make a probe landed on the moon and have it roll around for about 500 meters would win about $30 million. Um, eventually, this one company uh, persevered and they're now launching their creation that sort of looks like this. Um, essentially, I believe it's in late January and uh, this is going to be an exciting mission. You're going to hear a lot of talk about it because this is uh, basically like two different startups doing space exploration like NASA did uh, so many decades ago. This particular craft is going to be able to actually use its tiny rocket engines here to uh, hop around the moon for about 500 meters. So instead of rolling around like a rover, it's actually going to use these engines to sort of uh, lift and then land somewhere else, lift and land somewhere else. So expect a lot of buzz about this mission, I guess in the next few weeks or so. Then we also have a few more Falcon Heavy launches from SpaceX, and uh, these will be more or less commercial. Actually, I think one of them is going to be related to Air Force launching some kind of a test uh, satellite. And these will be uh, also kind of exciting because uh, this also means that Falcon Heavy can now finally be used for commercial launches of very large satellites into very difficult orbits. And if you want to find out more about different launches from different companies, you can go to this website I posted in the link in the description below. Um, and it does give you a preliminary schedule for the next uh, few months or so until the end of the year. But I think these were some of the more interesting and more curious missions. Unfortunately, I guess all of them are from SpaceX. There are two more missions that are launched by different different countries. Like, for example, China is also going to be launching a moon um, 
mission that is also going to be returning some samples uh, back to Earth, which is actually going to be the first such mission since uh, well, the Apollo, essentially. Uh, interestingly, India is also following this up with their own mission uh, to the moon. So both China and India are in a sense competing for uh, well, space exploration and space domination in a sense. Kind of similar to how uh, the United States and the Soviet Union did it uh, back like what, 50, 60 years ago from now. And the Indian mission is actually going to happen first. It's planned for January 31st. It's called uh, Chandrayaan-2 and it has both the lander and the orbiter. So the orbiter is going to scan the area and also stay in orbit while the lander will um, land on the moon and then have a little rover guy uh, roll around and collect some data and stuff. It's not going to be returning any samples, but it is going to uh, study the moon and for the most part, it's going to uh, add India to the list of countries that were, that were able to achieve this uh, by themselves. And it's most likely that they're actually doing this because they are planning to put a rover on Mars uh, in the next few years. And this is why uh, a lot of their missions were actually focusing on um, creating something really, really cheap and easy to maintain and, and something that can actually be done in very, very little time. Uh, they still hold the record for the cheapest mission to Mars. As a matter of fact, their mission to Mars was actually uh, cheaper than the movie called Mission to Mars or pretty much most of the Hollywood movies today. I believe this mission cost about $74 million or something like that. So in essence, it was actually um, considering the fact that you're launching something to another planet ridiculously cheap. But in short, uh, both China and India have quite a lot of interesting things happening this uh, upcoming year as well. And lastly, one other thing we know that's going to happen for sure is on January 21st, uh, there's actually going to be a total lunar eclipse that's going to be visible from North and South America. And I'm sure this will also generate a lot of buzz. Other than that, um, a lot of things will probably change dates and a lot of things will probably uh, be discovered when they're discovered. So we don't really know exactly what else is going to happen in 2019. Uh, but when it comes to uh, rocket launches or actual uh, cosmological events like uh, eclipses, we have them planned out. And I think the uh, lunar eclipse of January 21st was the biggest one I saw so far. And on that note, uh, I guess as new things come up, um, I'm going to cover them on this channel. So if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing to this channel and share this video with someone who loves learning about space through simulations and video games. In the next video, we're going to explore something else you may have not known before. So maybe come back tomorrow to watch something else. And on that note, I'm going to finish this here and go back to my shopping spree and see what else I can possibly buy that I probably will never use. Although, in the last few months, actually, I've bought some really, really cool things to help me with my YouTube uh, career. And that's actually thanks to the Patreon supporters that have been very generously donating to this channel. And I really, really thank you so much for all of this. If you do want to join and become a Patreon, the link is um, actually at the end of the video or below in the description. Um, and basically, I got to buy a new camera. I also got to buy a green screen and overall have become a lot happier about where this channel is actually headed now. Anyway, um, I'm going to uh, stop here. Thank you so much for watching and space out. And as always, bye-bye. But on the other hand, it's only $60. Oh my God, what do I do? Should I do this? No, you can stop yourself. Go and buy something useful, like this extremely odd looking uh, PlayStation controller mug. I could use that.